All right, I'll come back to this if you want to jot some of this down, but let's move on. So that was question one. Let's move over to question two into parametrics. <clears throat> 2A says, find the locus of, and then they provide you with a point, a variable point, and then they provide you with these uh, parametric equations. So what am I going to do with all of this stuff? I want to try and find a relationship between x and y that doesn't have all these p's and q's flying around. Okay. Now hopefully you recognize when you have a look at the y equation, uh, there it is. Seeing as that's got a p squared and a q squared in it, then your x equation, which is up here, you have no choice. You must square, right? In order to get p squareds and q squareds so they can talk to each other, you have to square somewhere along the line. So what I did was I did that really quickly, right? I knew I had to square at some point, so I said, let's just get, get it out of the way. Okay? And I just started to manipulate through so I could use the information provided in the question. Okay? So going from line 2 to line 3, all I've done is expand. I saw in line 3 that that PQ there is something that's provided to me in the question. Yeah, they give me a value for that, so I just do the substitution as required. And then only once I get to this line do I actually give the equation a name. That's when I call it equation 1. I suppose if you wanted to, you could have called that equation 1 and called this one 1a and 1b and 1c, but you don't need to name all of those. All those earlier ones are not that useful to me. So I just wait until I get into a form that is um, interesting, can interact with the other equation that I've got there, and then I name it. Okay. Say again. Yeah, how did you do it? This line here? Yep. Yep. So wait, pause for a second. So you went p plus q squared minus 2pq. And of course, that plus 4 is still there. OK, just before, just before Russell goes on, can you see we're basically doing the same thing, but from opposite directions? OK, so I started with the x. He started with the y. But he's going to do the same. I'm just anticipating here. He's going to do the same substitution that I did, because it's the information in the question we had to both work with. Does that make sense? So you can see eventually we're both going to get to something like these last lines down here where we finally get the x equation and the y equation looking close enough together that we can do a substitution of some kind. Okay. Any questions before we move on to the next bit? Yeah? You know, uh, you know how you can get the p squared plus q squared? Like, you know how it's like y minus 4 equals p squared plus q squared? You're talking about that line there? Whoops, sorry. Yeah, this line here? Yep. So you went back to this x line up here. Is that the first line that you're yeah. talking about? What did you do with it? I like, no, I, I squared it, but then I got it in terms of p squared plus q squared. Yeah, so I mean, this is one of the great examples of where, just like in circle geometry, you know how there's, there's so many different ways you can go about it. Did you, did you get there? Did yeah. you get there in there? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and your way may well even have been faster than mine. Um, I, I'll compare the number of lines that we had. This is the first way that occurred to me, and it gets there, and we all have confirmation that we went in a legitimate way because we came up with the same answer. Okay? Cool. All right, so um, that was 2a. Let's have a look at 2b. Now, before you have a go at 2b, um, can I get a show of hands? Who got this question out? 2b? Hands up straight. Hands up straight. Okay. That's interesting. Thanks, Paul, and concerning. Just have a look at the question, especially for those of you who came in a little bit late. Look at the question and see, what's your strategy through that before I scroll down and show you my strategy? What, what cues in the question tell you what direction to go in? Hmm. You've got a line, just any old straight line. It's a parabola. It's tangent to that parabola. What are you going to do with it? So Paul, what did you do? Yep, so, sorry, just before you go on, Paul. So you've taken this equation here and you substituted it into here. Is that right? Now, just remember, why is he doing that? What's he going to achieve once he does that? Because you've got to not just throw equations together and hope for the best. You've got to know why you're, like, what are you working towards? If he's put these two equations together simultaneously, what's he trying to find? Think. 
equation of a line, equation of parabola. He's looking for a point of intersection, right? Keep going, Paul. What did you do after that? So then I got the equation. Then I do the what's, what's it called? The b x minus b squared minus four. Okay. So so pause for a second. So what what Paul did was he found he went to solve for points of intersection, right? Because you've got a straight line and a parabola. If you've got some random straight line and some random parabola, how many points of intersection are you expecting? Probably two, right? We know it could be zero or it could be one, and that's the exact specific situation we're looking for, right? So you're expecting two, which is what gives you a quadratic. But he only wants one because uh, the question says it's a tangent, okay? So that's fine, and then you got your, that statement out of that. Is that correct? Okay. Now, interestingly, I went a whole different path, and this is one of the great things about it, right? I mean, we're all going to end up with the same am squared plus c equals zero line, but I went differently. I went through calculus. So this is what I did. And Paul, you can tell me whether this was faster or slower. I don't know. It depends on your working. Okay. I went to calculus because if they say it's a tangent, right, then I can make a statement about the gradient of the parabola at a particular point. Does that make sense? So let me walk you through my, my working. I first had to go from here to here. I didn't, x squared equals 4ay, I'd like to make y the subject, that just makes it easier for my brain to handle. And once I've got y as the subject, then I differentiate, okay? And that derivative should be very familiar because it's x squared equals 4ay, which we're sort of sick to death of from locus and parabola, okay? Once I had that, I know that the parabola is going to be tangent to this line at some point. But look, they give you the lines equation in what form? Have a look at it. Look at the straight line. What form is that? y equals mx plus c, that's slope intercept form, right? So the slope is right there. So that means at some point on my parabola, that gradient of the parabola must be the same as the gradient line. That's what, that's what it means to be tangent, right? So if they have to have the same gradient, then that derivative is going to be equal to the gradient. So once I just change the subject, ta-da, I found where it's going to intersect. Does that make sense? And I expect Paul, we came to the same. Did you end up getting that value? Yeah, okay. So we've, we've sort of come to the same point, but from different angles, right? Um, I'm not done yet though, because x equals 2am, that's nice, but it doesn't get me this piece of information here, am squared plus c equals zero. So in order to get to that, I wanted to find a y coordinate that goes with it, right? 2am, am squared, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? And I said, well, if, if my straight line passes through that point, then these coordinates will satisfy the equation of the line. So I substitute it in, and then you just have to rearrange a little bit to get your required answer. Okay. Paul, how many lines of working was yours? Roughly, anyway. Like Seven-ish. Seven so they're a bit faster. A bit faster. I feel like mine is uh, less involved algebraically. It's all very simple algebra, whereas the discriminant makes stuff makes stuff complicated because b squared minus 4ac can be quite messy, but um, they both work. <laughs>